My dream was to just live in another country. If you have a dream, there's nobody going to be there cheering you on. There's nobody going to be there to push you. There's not going to be anybody that's going to say, you're the man, you do that. You're going to have to go about this thing by yourself. I changed my name. Change is the only thing that will remain constant. So my name is and will always be Jay Gaucher. So due to my visa restrictions here in Brazil, I'm at my 90 day limit that they give you to stay here. So I just wanted to thank everyone that supported me on this journey and everyone that supported me on this channel and everyone that watches. This is my final weekend and this is how I spent it. This is another one of my favorite spots right here. I get a two dollar hot roll. It's like ten hay eyes. Some of y'all are probably thinking, ten hay eyes, two dollar sushi. Like that sounds nasty. But don't bring your ass over here then. Keep it all for me. Uh, muito obrigado. Simple little roll here, you know. Nothing, nothing too extravagant. Two dollars, man. Yeah, a little bit of salmon in there. Mostly rice. It's a glorious day today here in Sao Paulo, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take y'all to the hood today. I'll take y'all on a little walk with me, and we'll see what we can find. There's so much propaganda surrounding a lot of these places. If I tell my family, hey, I'm moving to Brazil, they're like, oh, it's dangerous there. Or what about coronavirus? And what about this and that? It's like, man, I'm one of those people that is just not scared to die. I'm ready to die at any moment. Not to say I'm looking for death or that I want to die. I put myself in dangerous positions in order to find that danger. It's like, no, man. The propaganda surrounding these places are so untrue and they're so false. Last year I lived in Mexico and all you hear is the people at the border and the cartel and man, there wasn't a point where I ever felt scared. I could walk down the middle of the street in Mexico at two in the morning and it was completely fine. I never felt in danger once. I think the United States is one of the most dangerous places on the planet. LA has to be one of the most dangerous places in the world. You can't wear certain colors, you can't be in certain neighborhoods, you can't just be walking down the street in Miami. You can't just be walking down the street in the middle of New York City at two in the morning. Chicago will have your ass changing up the way that you wear your hat. People get gunned down in Las Vegas. There's danger everywhere. If you with the shit, then you're gonna be confronted with the shit. So don't be with the shit. I just snatched me out one of these sandwiches. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Look at that. So good. I'm gonna get one of these bullets, too. It's the start. Oh, fake shit. Nada casual de luxo. Tô chique, confortável. Tô estilo chuchuco, rei lacoste. Então, nada é uma da casual de luxo. Tô chique, confortável. Tô estilo chuchuco, rei lacoste. These are vendors, man. These are vendors selling. I take a guy selling clothes in the middle of the sidewalk before a guy that's just begging for money. These are just hustlers. These are just dudes out there trying to make a living. Some people just ain't got it. Some people just ain't got the amount of opportunities and their paths are a little bit less fortunate to say. But I'll tell you, man, in Brazil, you'll meet some of the best people you've ever met in your whole life. The best people in the world right here. Americans kind of take that for granted sometimes that other people have this American dream and they're like, man, fuck, if I could live in America, like that would be the dream. It's like my dream was to live in Brazil. I feel very, very fortunate to be able to experience both sides and to have 
that be the basis to my knowledge and I couldn't think of a better place to be as far as people are concerned. I don't know much about bags, but this place has some dope bags in it. Maybe somebody that knew a lot about bags or has a lot of bags or a woman per se would be able to tell. But for me, I was like, damn, man, these bags is dope over here. Like, I would for sure rock one of these if I was a female. The shoes on the other hand, the shoes I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. It's all about the material. If you slap any name on any material sweater or shirt or jacket or whatever, then you're gonna be able to be like, hey bro, like, that shit looks cheap or I don't know about that. All the Yeezys you but want. The bags I couldn't tell, the shoes I could. The jewelry was hella light. You could tell the jewelry was really fake when you just held it in your hand. It was, it was like holding a pencil. My video suck right here because nobody wants to be on camera. So every time I have my camera out, they be like, hey, get your ass up out of here with that shit. Like I'm like working for Dateline or something. Like I'm finna expose them or something. It's like, motherfucker, you know this shit fake. Everybody know it's fake, so what's the issue? So this is the largest Catholic cathedral in all of Sao Paulo. And it just reminds me of what Tupac said. He just says it way better than me. One side of it is kind of clear, but just on the other side of this church, it has a whole nother world attached to it. If the churches took half the money that they was making and gave it back to the community, we'd be all right. If they take half the buildings that they use to praise God and gave it to motherfuckers who need God, we'd be all right. We be all right. Have you seen some of these goddamn churches lately? It's ones that take up the whole block in New York. It's homeless people out here. Why ain't God letting them stay there? Why these niggas got gold ceilings and shit? Why God need gold ceilings to talk to me? Why do God need colored windows to talk to me? Why God can't come where I'm at, where he sent me? If God wanted to talk to me in a pretty spot like that, why the hell he sent me here then? You know what I mean? That, that make ghetto kids not believe in God. Why? That makes sense. It makes sense that if you're good in your heart, then you you closer to God. But if you're evil, then you're close to the devil. That makes sense. I see that every day. All that other spooky shit don't make sense. So I believe God blesses us. I believe God blesses those that hustle, those that use their mind, and those that overall are righteous. I believe that your karma, everything that you do bad comes back to you. So anything that I'm doing that's bad, I'm going to have to suffer for. But in my heart, I think what I'm doing is right. You know what I mean? So I feel like I'm going to heaven. You know what I mean? And I think heaven is just when you sleep, you sleep with a good conscience. You don't have nightmares. And hell is when you sleep, the last thing you see is all the fucked up things you did in your life. And you just see it over and over again. I'm about to get dressed right here and uh, take you on a real journey of what it really looks like to go out. I'll take you down the street and uh, we'll see what we can get into. How you like this sweater? It looked like I got it from Paris, huh? <laughs> I got it from the Chinaman of the street. Man, Michael Jordan himself couldn't tell that that ain't him right there. That's Michelle Juondin. <laughs> I see a lot of y'all laughing right now like, oh man, he bought that fake ass shit. But what you don't know is I gave all my real sweaters to the homeless dude that's downstairs. Off my back, might I add. I was walking home and it was freezing outside. While you guys are in summer in the United States, it's winter here. And I'm walking home and I see this dude, he just has slippers, just a t-shirt and some short pants. I just took my sweater off, gave it to him, and I literally took my shoes off my feet and gave it to him. I returned a little bit later and gave him some socks. I know that homeless people need socks and drawers. That's like the most important thing. I would do it 10 times over again. It, if I had 10 sweaters, I would give all 10 away. Nobody cares, man. Nobody cares. It's not like I'm out there explaining myself. Ooh, I don't normally do this, but it's not that at all. I had to add that part in there because it needed to be said. I'm not gonna be out here filming myself, giving away things to homeless or trying to make a YouTube video about it or what, because that's just how I really am. It, I, I don't need the clout for it. That's I don't give a fuck, I'll wear whatever. The clothes never made me. I've had a lot of money, I've had very little money, and I never felt the need to express myself through clothing as if that was the thing that was gonna make me. If you're really a good person, man, it's no sweat. I, I never thought twice about it.
So this is just like a regular street right here. They got all the shopping. You turn down this way right here. And it's popping right here. They got a little lunch set right here. Got my man's right here cooking. most enjoyable part for me. The people here don't need anything. They just need a street, some beer, and it's a party. And that's just the way it is. I find that so refreshing. I found that to be the most gratifying part of being out. Tell you how much of a fiend I am. So I went to that place and it's cracking right there. Everybody smoking hookah, drinking and shit. So I was like, man, let me buy hookah from you. He was like, man, we don't have no hookah. I was like, you don't have no hookah? You ain't got no tables. He's like, we ain't got no hookah. You can sit wherever you want. And I was like, all right, what if I bring my own hookah? Like from my house. He was like, it's good. Bring your own hookah. You can, you can smoke. So it's like a five, 10 minute walk to the house. So I just went. Now I got my backpack with me and I'm about to go smoke some hookah with my hookah. Bring my hookah to the party. <laughs> so when I showed up with my hookah, all I needed was a table. So I went up to these ladies. I got this hookah, but I didn't got no friends. <laughs> and you have a table, so let me just sit with you. And the girls was like, shoot, pull up a chair, like, say less. I made new friends right here. And everybody right here, and smoke a hookah. So I sat with them for a while. We ordered food. We smoked and talked. Just sit there and converse with strangers in Portuguese for hours. To me, that's the top of the reason why I'm here. And it just turned out to be an incredible night. The bar ended up closing so early. It closed at like 10 o'clock. So we left there at like 10.30. The girls went their way and I decided to go over to Roosevelt Park. And Roosevelt Park is my normal kicking spot on a Friday night. Hey, e aí, man? This here is Roosevelt Park. Ironically, it's named after our American president, Theodore Roosevelt. A 10 minute walk from my house. So I strolled over there and I just brought my drinks with me. The new party just started right there. Here on Friday nights, you can catch me right here. You can skate, you can just chill. It has beer and food and whatever you might like. Now this is real Brazil, which you won't get. Everybody's just chilling, having a beer, drinking. I'm drinking. Well, I'm almost out of my drink and I'm looking like a goddamn American with my phone right now in my hand. So I'm gonna put this shit away. I'm about to run in this place right here where you can get whatever beer you like. You can just pour your own shit and uh, I'll take you with me there. Look at this shit right here. Everybody wilding. I'm about to go to this place right here. Pick your own beer. Que notícia boa, que dizer Que tá com saudade, que quer me ver Lembranças boas Que tempo bom dentro do carro e aquele som fazendo parte da novela que eu inventei com você e os atores principais somos nós. So I went to the pick your beer place and I left my ID at the house. So the lady at the counter was like, you can't drink here because I need your ID and your credit card. So I was like, fuck man, that shit sucks. As I was leaving, this dude was like, where are you from? I'm from Las Vegas. He was like, shit, come drink with us. And I was like, man, I can't get a drink. I don't have my ID. He goes, fuck your ID, come over here. Like, it's good, I, I got you. Poured me up a drink and we started chopping it up. He introduced me to his friends and their group and we just started drinking. Camera hella shaky. 
because I didn't have like 76 beers and about 45 glasses of wine. He was like, why do you have a backpack? <laughs> I was like, long story, bro. I got a hookah in here. I just took it to this other place. I was like, well, I'm about to go home and drop my hookah back off at my house. I'll come back. I'm trying to give you the real, but it's hard, man. It's hard to be having fun and working for YouTube at the same time. Just for context, when I went to go drop my hookah off, I took my backpack off, took my sweater off, and I changed my shirt. So this is the same night I just came back and I met with them. We went out, we started drinking a little bit more. We went to a few clubs and now I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm downtown. I don't really even, oh, kind of close to my house actually. I went out, met some people, had a few drinks. They had a few gay friends. We went to a few gay bars and shit. Niggas was kissing each other and whatever. Now I'm walking on my way home and such is life. I know it's dark and this is not what YouTube friendly, but there's this place that I really like getting a sandwich from. It's right there, a little lunchette. I'm gonna take you right there, right now actually. Oh, look at the fucking line at this place. Holy like, shit, look at It's three at o'clock in the morning and I'm touching this lunchette right here. They got bomb ass sandwiches though. Obviously it's bomb because they got a little line right here. The main thing right here is these launchettes. And as you can see on a Friday night, it's motherfucking popping after the club. So it's like three in the morning. I'm fucking trying to eat. I'm right here, though. Alright, here, though. Alright, here, though. Alright, here, though. Alright, Everybody come here after the club. If you look at my YouTube, I've never tried to censor myself. I've never tried to be anything other than who I am. Kind of put myself out there and be a little bit less private. I'm very private about my life and I'm very private about the things I do and, and places I go. And the start of this YouTube channel was just to let, let loose, let free. Hey man. This is how it goes. I'm not gay, but I'll go to a gay bar. I'm not tripping. To meet people and converse with people in any language will expose you to some of the finer moments of life. And I've always tried to do that. Hit that spot right there when you're drunk. And uh, damn, it's hella dark. Man, you can't see me shit. It's gonna be bad on YouTube, but fuck YouTube. This is real. You want to come to Sao Paulo, you want to come to Brazil, you want to eat. It ain't always going to be fucking bright lights and fireworks and good food. Maybe it's shitty, maybe it's good, maybe it's far, maybe it's close. Maybe it's two in the morning, maybe it's two in the afternoon. But at the end of the day, man, enjoy your life. Have a good time living. Meet new people, try new things, do new shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing out here in Brazil, but I'm going with the flow. These dudes right here, they're my homies for life, man. I was making a YouTube video once and I stumbled across this place, Capone Brewery and met the owner and he's super cool dude man my boy arthur he's my homie for life introduced me to his whole family introduced me to all his friends and this is the next night saturday night this is the following day the final weekend here come come hang out with us we're gonna go to this club and i love 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 brazilian music brazilian music is is some of the best music in the world <laughs> We 
party, we bought this bottle, and I told him like in Vegas, a bottle like this is like six hundred dollars, like thirty five hundred hey eyes. And he was like, what? Like that's crazy. That bottle was four hundred hey eyes, which is like eighty dollars. So we kicked it in the VIP section upstairs. Party till about five in the morning. That was my first club experience out here in Sao Paulo. Super cool dudes. I'm so grateful for them because they changed my whole trip around and meeting them was some of the best experiences of my life. <laughs> As you can see from my videos, I have no rhyme or reason to these things. I go out and I enjoy myself, I have a good time, and I just bring my camera with me and just try to expose some of the parts of my life that might be unique, it might be the same, and I don't know. I don't ever know what the night's gonna bring. I just go with it, try to meet new people, try to speak Portuguese. I think that traveling has just changed my life in a way where I'm experiencing parts of my own personality that I may not even have known before. I've been very upfront about my not knowing what this YouTube thing is, what will happen in my day or my night, and I've been very transparent about my own personality and my own shortcomings, whether it be getting hit in the face in jujitsu, or whether it be getting drunk on a night and, and blabbing off at the mouth. That's the exciting part for me, is the unknown. So this place right here, you just give them a photo of yourself and they'll put it on your coffee for you. So you see how it turns out. Oh, perfect. Some honey bread here and my iced coffee with hazelnut. Look at that hot guy right there. I just want to find a way to encourage everyone to pursue their passions and whatever that form of fashion may be. It may not be traveling, it may not be learning the language. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just going to places where other people live and other people eat and have a little bit of a taste of their experience. This is all new. The whole thing is new. It's a new environment. And with that change, with that element of surprise, comes some of the, the greatest moments in life for me. That makes me ready to die. It makes me ready to to give my life to the pursuit of something greater than just myself. You're just gonna have to do it alone. So please, won't, please teach her, tell me one higher. Yeah. My heart, there are boundaries.